Hi everyone, I'm Reka Mudaraj. It is 2.34 on this Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for joining us. These are the stories you guys are clicking on today. Let's get to it. More Astros sign stealing fallout. Now Marvin Gonzalez, the first Astros hitter who was on the 2017 World Series championship team to apologize for his role in the sign stealing scandal. Let's take a listen uh, to what he said, or we listened earlier to what he said. He said that he was remorseful for everything that happened, for everything that they did as a group, and for the players that were affected directly by, quote, us doing this. That's why I feel more regret, and that is why I'm remorseful. That is from Marvin Gonzalez, again, the first uh, former Astros uh, hitter to talk about this. Gonzalez now, of course, with the Minnesota Twins. Okay, we want you to take a look at this picture. This is 28-year-old Brandon J. Carter. HPD calls him a very, very dangerous person. He's a suspected serial rapist and he is on the run. He's linked to at least three cases. Uh, HPD just spoke. They believe he is uh, involved in other cases as well. They say that Brandon Carter stalks his victims before attacking them in his in their homes. He says he is very brutal. He holds them at gunpoint, ties them ties them up during the assault. The most recent case happened on January 5th in West Houston uh, when the 31 year old victim left her apartment to go to work. Detectives say Carter ambushed her at gunpoint, forced her back inside her home, put a hoodie over her head, tied her up with plastic zip ties and sexually assaulted her before leaving with her debit card. Now, detectives say Carter is very methodical when it comes to leaving DNA evidence at the scenes, but it was actually the victim's stolen debit card that led to his identity. They found surveillance video of Carter using the card at a Shell station at 647 Greens Road. He was later identified by a relative and a roommate. So again, Brandon J. Carter linked to two sexual assaults in the Greens Point area in June and September of 2019. And then of course a third case. He is, stands about five foot eight, 160 pounds. Uh, this is an old mug shot of him, so he could have changed his appearance slightly. Uh, but if you see him and you recognize him, please call police. Okay, were you at Monster Jam on Saturday? Well, there were some scary moments at this weekend's show when a piece of debris went flying into NRG Stadium, into the audience there. So Sergio Valdez happened to catch it all on camera. He saw two pieces of debris fly off a truck, but the javelin-like piece ended up injuring a young girl and her parents in the crowd right there. Valdez says he later saw the child return to her seat with her parents. They were holding ice packs. Feld Entertainment, which puts on this show, sent a statement to KHOU saying the fans did get medical attention on site. But uh, really scary moments there. Okay, some good news for T-Mobile customers. Federal judge has approved T-Mobile's $26.5 billion takeover of Sprint, removing a major obstacle to a shakeup in the wireless industry. Now, after the deal closes, the number of major U.S. wireless companies will go from four to three. T-Mobile says this deal will benefit its customers as it becomes, you know, a fiercer competitor to Verizon and AT&T. But a group of state attorneys, gen state attorneys general tried to block this deal. They argued that having one fewer phone company would actually cost Americans billions of dollars in higher cell phone bills. Either way, a judge rejected those claims and the FCC formally approved the merger last November. All right. Let's go now to Blake with a look at our forecast. How long is this rain going to keep coming? You know, all the way up until about the lunchtime tomorrow, maybe into that drive home tomorrow afternoon. But then after that, things begin to dry out as we get into Thursday and, of course, Valentine's Day. A live look out of the city of Houston. Ah, well, it could be Seattle. The for <laughs> you know, That's the way the weather has been over the last couple of days. You can see the rain on the tower cam uh, lens there. Chilly afternoon, obviously. Temperatures have not made it very high today. 54, 55 is about it. Light showers will persist and stormy weather through 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Here's a look at the current temperatures. We've made it to 55 now. Double nickels at Bush Airport, 57 at Hobby, 55 there in Sugarland. Still holding on to 47 degrees out there in Columbus, and these temperatures represent 18, 21 to as much as 26 degrees colder than just this time yesterday. So a raw afternoon indeed across southeast Texas. There's a look at the radar. Showers have been very light, even though they have been persistent. And we're going to see these showers maintain themselves throughout the evening hours. So keep that umbrella handy. Again, very light showers, really amounting to a torrential drizzle in some cases. Really not looking for a whole lot. Maybe a few heavier showers out there towards Washington County. But as we expand the view, look at the heavy rain here continuing across northern Alabama into Mississippi, northern Louisiana, out there towards Monroe and Tallulah. Tallulah, Louisiana. They've got a story about that place. Uh, Shreveport and all the way back along through uh, Dallas. 
But look at this. We've got that area of low pressure out here that's going to continue to send disturbances out ahead of it in our direction. So we're going to keep rain chances in the forecast, it looks like, until that area of low pressure finally ejects to the northeast. In fact, as we turn on the water vapor, you can see it out there spinning over Arizona. Let's take you up to 18,000 feet, and there you go. You can see it very clearly there, but it's going to be picked up by this trough of low pressure digging on into the central part of the country. And until that area of low pressure kicks on out of here, we're going to continue to see those rain chances. But I think it will eventually depart our region, and that means Thursday and Friday shaping up to be dry days. In fact, Valentine's Day looking to be on the chilly side and sunny, so that's good. We need the rain, believe it or not. In fact, taking a look at the drought monitor here across the state of Texas, we're talking about severe drought conditions across uh, central and north Texas, even getting pretty close to the Houston area. So a good drink of water may not be half bad for our area. Take a look at the future track here. You'll notice the showers persisting, but look at the line of thunderstorms developing out to the west first thing tomorrow morning. But they begin to dissipate a little bit as they push towards the I-45 corridor. And by the time we get to 530, you'll notice most of our area coming up dry. And I think once we get to that drive home tomorrow, I think things clear on out and uh, we're going to be good for at least a couple of days, Thursday, Friday for sure. And then maybe a, a rain chance getting into Saturday night into Sunday, but I've actually lowered the rain chances heading into the weekend. Future track temperatures uh, starting off in the 50s here. Uh, this is interesting. Look, this is 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So those of you to the west and northwest of Houston could actually see low temperatures tonight in the 40s. If you are in southeast Houston, Pasadena, Channel View, getting out towards, say, anywhere in Galveston County or Brazoria County, look at the warm front here and the warm air surging in out of the Gulf of Mexico. So much warmer towards the coast, much colder out to the west. Cold front will catch up to that warm front, though, and overtake the area. Looks like tomorrow will be another chilly day with high temperatures in the 50s heading into the afternoon hours. So don't let the warm air fool you first thing tomorrow morning, especially if you're in east and southeast parts of the viewing area, because I think that front will eventually take over the area and that means cool afternoon expected heading into your Wednesday. So we're actually going to knock these numbers down a little bit as we get into Wednesday afternoon. We're only talking about upper 50s more likely uh, is the case there. 60 on Thursday, 58 on Friday. Small rain chances entering the forecast again Saturday, Sunday, Monday as the clouds and the rain return to the forecast getting into early next week. So that's the very latest on the forecast. We'll have another detailed look at this in the timeline is when you can expect the rain to end in your neighborhood coming up today on the 411.